So The Bad Batch Season 3 started on Wednesday, and so far, it's good. It's great. I really like this show, but there's some stuff in the new episodes that I don't love, and they didn't come as a huge surprise. It's kind of where it's looked like the show is heading for a while. It's just that it's a lot more confirmed now. Uh, our worst fears have been realised. And it all involves this guy right here. That That's not this guy. Kind of this guy. Mostly this guy right here. The Emperor... Darth Sidious, Sheev, Reginald, Palpatine. And it just had me thinking about the state of modern Star Wars and how it's being poisoned. Okay, poisoned is a little bit dramatic, uh, but it's definitely being held back, and I'd like to dive into why. Now, I don't know if anyone remembers this, but a few years ago there was a Star Wars movie that made a gazillion spaceships and the dead Emperor appear out of thin air. There were Snokes in a jar, Rey was a Palpatine, it was this whole thing. Now, I didn't like that movie very much at all, but I think I've had my time to whine and complain and sulk about it. That's not really what this video is about. The point is that The Rise of Skywalker is currently set at the end of the story, and the way that Star Wars jumps about chronologically, it's meant that every project we've had since has been set before that, and it's now the responsibility of these projects Projects to take episode 9's Somehow Palpatine Returned and turn it into Here's How Palpatine Returned. The result is that all roads now lead to Exegol. They have to. Because the franchise has so many different formats and time periods, it has this perceived duty to take something that came completely out of the blue, and it really was very blue, and turn it into the payoff of a lovely retroactive setup. So now if you get a book that's about Luke and Lando after Return of the Jedi, it has to also be about Ochi and Rey's parents. Ochi and Exegol have to show up in the Empire Strikes Back era Vader comics. They're doing a lot of work to try and make it make sense. I get it. I really do, but at the same time, I think I've had enough now. Don't get me wrong, a lot of this stuff was in dire need of an explanation. That being said, I don't necessarily see the need for every pre-Rise of Skywalker project to pivot to doing the heavy lifting for that movie. Because now, whenever there's some sort of long-standing mystery that's being teased, it comes with a twinge of dread for me. The idea that whatever the original story was setting out to tell, it now has to all be in service of this other Star Wars movie. When The Mandalorian started having a clone subplot and there were these weird things in tank it was kind of like, oh, is that what we're doing now? This story about a bounty hunter is all set up for Snokes and things like that. Turns out it was something unrelated and probably a lot more stupid. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it harmed that period of speculation that we could have had of like, oh, what, what's this going to all be about? Because it was just like, oh, they're doing, they're doing a Snoke, aren't they? And then there's the Bad Batch that's had these mysteries running throughout that have been interesting and effective, but they have come with this caveat. When Palpatine showed up in The Bad Batch Season 2, it was this incredible moment of, holy shit, what an incredible manipulative puppet master. But then when he shows up in Season 3, it's like, what are you guys doing here with this, this cloning stuff? Are you, are you doing a Rise of Skywalker? Are you trossing? And, and yeah, it turns out they are. That's the big secret of the Kaminoans and, and all this clone stuff. It, it's just set up for, for Rise of Skywalker. This fantastic story of the early days of the Empire, the transition between clone troopers and stormtroopers, the story of a group of soldiers who are finding their place in a galaxy that doesn't want them anymore, is now muddled with prequel-era Palpatine going, Please make a clone version of me and put it in a jar so I can come back for the rise of Skywalker. And I find that kind of depressing. And then there's Omega, whose entire existence might just be Tross set up. She's a wonderful character in her own right, and I've loved seeing her story unfold, but I'm kind of worried now that the wider point of her character might just be that they snatch her up and use her genes to make a Snoke. We thought we had all the answers about Snoke, but it turns out we never once considered who his mum was. They're hilariously dedicating themselves to the idea that Star Wars is about genetics, it's about bloodlines, it's about DNA, it's about midichlorians. They're scared to say midichlorians because people think they're rubbish, but they're still doubling down on them being such an important part of the story. It doesn't really matter if you just call it the M count, if it's still doing the stuff that people hated The Phantom Menace for doing. Sometimes with big multimedia universes, the releases just feel like homework for what's to come, and that's a terrible feeling, but this doesn't even feel like that. This feels like retroactive homework, studying for a test you've already taken, the required reading for something that you watched before the required reading even existed. And I know what some of you are going to say, I'm sure a lot of you have already written and posted the comment. The Clone Wars. There's always been a lot of talk about expanded media, and animation in particular, being able to fix the weaker elements of the series. I remember as the sequels were coming out, a lot of people were saying that what this era really needs is the same kind of exploration and expansion that the prequels got in The Clone Wars, and now people are saying that's what's happening here. And I don't really agree. 
I think the prequels could only really be fixed because they weren't particularly broken on a fundamental level. The Clone Wars didn't need to scramble around and make sure all the pieces were in place for the films to then pick up. The broad strokes were there, they were pretty clear. It's just that the films themselves left a fair bit to be desired when it came to making you care or actually being engaging. Fleshing out the ideas and the characters with a bit more space and attention really retroactively enriches the story that had already been told in a way that feels very different to what's going on here. I agree that it was kind of what The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi needed, because when JJ was making that first movie, he was clearly so uninterested in the political status quo of the galaxy, so that would be prime real estate for a bit of exploration. That was already happening in stuff like Bloodline and Aftermath and Battlefront 2. We were seeing the rise of the First Order from the ashes of the Empire in the shadow of this complacent New Republic. It never had to contradict anything or insert some major unknown twists and turns into the past. It was just about taking what we already knew and providing a little bit more of an understanding. But now the First Order conflict feels pretty irrelevant and it has to all be about the rise of Skywalker and Palpatine. But I can't imagine this approach ever fixing my issues with the rise of Skywalker. As stupid as they were, those plot points weren't where the rise of Skywalker fell apart for me. I think it's hollow on an emotional level and fails practically every one of its characters to a certain degree. Explaining where the zombie Plapatines came from doesn't fix that. So all this episode 9 homework doesn't make The Rise of Skywalker any better, and it doesn't make the projects doing it any more interesting. With The Bad Batch especially, I think it's lacking the dramatic irony it needs. In the prequels, they don't really hide Palpatine's plan from us, because they know we know where it's going. There's a satisfaction and tragedy that comes from knowing more than our heroes and helplessly watching it unfold. With The Bad Batch, it feels like the show is trying to keep us as in the dark as the characters, but we already sort of automatically know more? It's relishing in very slowly revealing to us, we're doing a Rise of Skywalker here on Tantis, but we know, and the fact they're trying to make us speculate about what feels like a foregone conclusion is pretty weird. I will have to see how this aspect of Season 3 pans out, because at the moment it's kind of harming the show for me, and not just because I don't want to be reminded of Rise of Skywalker. But honestly, so what if it was just that? The prequels being at the start of the saga meant that all the supplementary material that was meant to enrich and enhance that story could all be localised in one specific portion of the timeline. You didn't have to derail the Clone Wars to make the story about Anakin, he was already there, that was already the point. With the Rise of Skywalker, that kind of localization or damage limitation isn't really possible. It's something that seeps through and impacts everything. You can't really go to any spot on the timeline anymore without being confronted with homework for this movie. That's why I used the word poison, as hyperbolic as that was. It may not seem like it, but I've made my peace with The Rise of Skywalker as best I can, and I'm way more interested in pushing ahead and telling new stories than I am in scrambling around trying to make sense of the old. And I don't necessarily mean new stories as in post-Rise of Skywalker, although that is the ideal. I think it's possible to tell new stories in earlier parts of the timeline. Andor is a fantastic example of that. Things can be consistent with the overall saga without necessarily pivoting to just being Rise of Skywalker lore explained videos at the expense of their own narratives. I think The Bad Batch specifically will be fine, I hope so at least. I hope they make it very specific to the characters and give it some smaller stakes within the big galactic Skywalker saga-ness of it all. But on the whole, I just want to be done with this. I think I know enough about how Palpatine returned at this point, my plot brain is satisfied, and I would like to move on. I'd love to know what you all think about this. Do you feel similarly to me, or do you disagree and think I'm a big dummy? Because I know there are a lot of people who think the latter. <laughs> I posted something about this on Twitter, and I had loads of people tell me that they love that the shows are doing this, and that Star Wars as a whole is doing what The Rise of Skywalker didn't, and making it all make sense. And if you think that, great, then I'm so glad this stuff is working for you. I'd love to hear from you either way, as long as you're not too mean to me. Uh, do let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, please share it, subscribe to the channel, I make Star Wars videos here, I make other videos here, we have fun. Follow me on Twitter for all the Star Wars thoughts that don't make it onto this channel. I'll see you next week, love you lots.